Hi, my name is True Wilson. I am a 14-year-old transgender girl. The first idea that came into my head that I was maybe transgender, I didn't know the word, but I think it was drawing a mermaid or a dress. And a boy in my class came up to me and said, why are you drawing that? That's a girl drawing. Only girls draw, draw those things. You're a boy. And I'm like, well, maybe I'm not. But, and for the rest of the day, actually, I didn't pay attention at all in class because I was just thinking like, wait, maybe I'm not a boy. I've never heard of this before. Like, why do I feel like all of a sudden certain about this. And my mind was just racing with all these questions. Like, why do I feel this way? Like, do normal people do this? Like, is this just a phase or something? And it was a pretty confusing time for me because I was in like grade one or two. When we discovered that True's gender identity was not um, what her birth gender was, it was a very scary time. And to go to the school looking for support um, and to have them kind of turn on us, it was overwhelming and scary and, and sad. Um, the complete opposite of what we needed and what our kids needed and it was really, really hard. When I like said, like, I have a I have an older sister now, my teacher said, like, you have an older brother. And I'm like, no, I have an, an older sister. Like, no Jude, you have an older brother. It felt like like my teacher was the bad guy. Since I had to go to school wearing the boy's uniform and answering to my boy pronouns and name, it was difficult for me because I couldn't focus in school. I was always worried about like, people are looking at me. Like, it just made my learning experience just horrible. I had filed a human rights complaint against the Catholic School District of Vancouver. I won. We were able to make a policy that was accepting of trans youth. It just felt so good to know that the next trans person that walked into that school wouldn't have to go through the terrors and things that I had to go through. When we left the school that we were at and we went to the school that we are now in, it was overwhelming the joy and it, and it was really emotional uh, just sitting there with the faculty members of principal, vice principal and having specialists there saying what can we do in a situation that things go bad. And what can we do in a situation when things are going good? So all across the board, they were educating themselves and, and being proactive. And to have it be a non-issue, to be met with, of course, like of course we're here, whatever you need, we're here. Like that, a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. It's incredible. Yeah. I think it's important to learn Soji language um, to better support the youth. The beginning of class, I say to all my students, I say, okay, when we do names today, I'm still getting to know you. Can you uh, tell tell the rest of the class what, what pronouns you use? Does everyone know what I mean when I say pronouns? And almost in like unison, they all kind of like roll their eyes back in their head and go, yes, we know what pronouns are. We get it, it, it we, we totally understand. And I go, oh, okay. So I'll start off, my name is Mr. Adrian and I use him and he pronouns. We go around and without even skipping a beat, the students had no problem. When you ask someone their pronouns and they tell you, they're giving you a little bit of insight into who they are. They're sharing something with you and it's really important to listen. For people who think that it's too hard to use they as a singular pronoun, it's really important just to practice. Often for people when they're thinking about gender, there's fluidity, there's multiplicity, so sometimes they really is the right fit for a person. Intersecting identities means that people don't move around the world with one singular identity. The concept of intersecting identities is really beautiful. Me being gay, an immigrant, um, and a person of color, and I can't choose one being more important than the other part of my identity. A lot of these things intersect and really layer in terms of um, the discrimination that a youth may be facing, the stereotyping a youth may be facing. And if we know the full picture, we're better able to assess what this student might need in order to uplift them in the classroom and to really change their experience and empower them. For me, the advice I have for educators coming in on their journey on all things SOGI is to be really curious. I tell people all the time to stop and ask kids, who are you? Because teachers will say to me, what, what pronoun do I use when I'm talking to um, a gender creative kid or a gender fluid uh, you know, 17 year old? And I say, ask them, it's all they want.